Hey, it's Ross here from Eosphere in Australia. I'm going to walk you through a tutorial on how to build an EOS node for your own uh, development and environment. Uh, the first thing we need to do is go to the EOS uh, uh, GitHub page so we can find the source. As you can see I'm grabbing in here from Google, just pointing me in the right direction. And there we are on the EOS GitHub page. What we're going to be doing is uh, essentially Putting all of the uh, installing all of the dependencies um, off a brand new um, Ubuntu installation. So all the dependencies that we need in order to actually build from the source code from the EOS source code. So this is just logging in, and as you can see, I'm using 17.10 Ubuntu 17.10. The first thing we want to do is um, update our APT repositories. And I'm going to install screen so that I'll, if we happen to lose connection through to our SSH session, it means uh, the process will carry on, all the processes will carry on in the background. So it was, um, I just did the screen from APT, and it was uh, screen space minus capital S, and the name of the session, the window name that I was gonna call it EOS. And now I am just copying all the um, dependency scripts, as you can see on the EOS page, the guys were nice enough to put together all of the commands for us. As you can see, I'm also in, in fast mode. So the video is playing at uh, accelerated speed. Now I'm installing the, the Boost C++ library. obviously going to take a little bit longer when you do the installation. I've got everything going at 20 times. Uh, the entire build start to end took close to an hour for me. Right, now that that's done, next we're going to install SECP 256K1, which are the elliptic curve domain parameters, which we use for key generation and uh, management for the, uh, for the cryptography. Next, we're going to be installing the WebAssembly compiler.
Next, we're going to install binary gen. Obviously, WSM had a, a dependency on it, uh, followed by LLVM. LLVM is used for um, uh, working with machine code, I believe. Yeah, that is the last of our dependencies, which means that uh, we can now move on to actually uh, compiling the EOS uh, software from source. That is further up on the page. Building EOS and running a node, because you will be running a local node, and now we'll be building from source. Okay, now we're going to build uh, the EOS application from source. So the first thing we're going to do is clone the EOS directory on from the GitHub site. And now we're going to make a directory for us to, to, to build EOS in. And then we're going to go into that directory and we're going to run cmake to get all our build parameters configured. We're just using the generic ones that were given to us by um, the EOS team. Okay, great. Now we're going to just make them. So the EOS um, application has actually been built now. And then we're going to just speed this up. Now our EOS is effectively built and we are going to configure some of the parameters before we run for the first time. Okay, so first things first is we need to find the location of the Genesis file. There we can see it there, genesis.json, and that's in, uh, in the build directory. Now we go into the programs, and we go into EOSIOD first, and what we're going to do is we're going to run the EOS app, and we're going to stop it straight away because it won't have any configuration. But what would have, it would have done now is created a data directory, and inside there, there'll be a config.ini file that we need to edit. So we go into that data directory and edit that config.ini. First thing we need to do 
as you can see with the list of parameters that we need to configure, is to go and actually point it to the directory of the genesis.json file. And we know that that was in the build directory. Okay, and the next thing we need to do is allow stale um, block production because we are not going to be connecting to anybody. We are going to be connecting to uh, ourselves. It's a single node on our own testnet. Then we need some producer names, which are already configured inside the Genesis file. And we're going to add all of those producer names. And then, of course, we actually need some plugins configured including the producer plugin, and we're going to just copy and paste those directly into that config.inr. Notice that I'm using nano to edit the config.inr file, which means that when we exit from nano in order to save it, we go control X and say yes to save. Uh, you can also see there's the generic key that we're going to use. That's the one that exists inside the, the Genesis file, and we'll just be using that for our, te uh, our testing purposes. So control X, yes, enter. Okay, and now we're all set to actually run the EOS blockchain on our own testnet for the first time. Dot forward slash EOS D, and there we go. As you can see, we're producing blocks. Okay, now we're successfully producing blocks on our single node. So let's go and have a look and see what kind of resources that we're using. You'll see I'll be installing a program called HTOP, which is quite a good visualization on what's going on with our CPU and memory. And as you can see there, not much going on at all. Okay, and now we're gonna go and see if we can actually query um, our EOS IOD that's running, and for that we use EOS IOC, which is what we use to actually interact with the blockchain that's running. So let's just go and have a look at some basic commands. So that's the directory for EOS IOD. As you can see, it's in the build programs directory. So we're going to go into EOS IOD, and we'll just go and see what the commands are available for us dash dash help will give us a list of the commands as you can see version create get so let's go and do a direct query so get and we'll probably go ahead and go have a look at a get info and there you can see producing blocks absolutely flying at second block times but there is no there is no load on the on our test server at this point and there we go successfully running uh, uh, EOS node. The next few we will look at, if uh, these kind of videos are helpful to you, is how to actually walk through some of the example contracts and perhaps upload a currency contract. Hopefully this uh, video was useful to you. Um, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up and uh, follow us on Twitter at eosphere underscore ro.